Okay, so welcome to this next video on uh, the G2M transition of the cell cycle. So at the moment we're just having a reminder of what we've already studied in the cell cycle. So we've seen uh, what's happening in G1 phase, we've seen that uh, we are assembling these, um, uh, these pre-replication complexes on all of the origins of replication. Now uh, we are going to discuss the S phase, but before we can discuss the S phase, we need to discuss the um, transition transition basically, this G1S transition, so we'll have a little bit of a reminder of the G1S transition. Okay, so remember the important thing that happens in the G1S uh, transition is that you release these E2F transcription factors with their dimerization partner from the retinoblastoma protein. Okay, so let me draw this, so where should I put it? I'll put it down here. Okay, so usually in a cell which is not copying its DNA, there is a protein known as the retinoblastoma protein. So this is the retinoblastoma protein, often abbreviated to RB. So retinoblastoma protein. And retinoblastoma protein uh, basically um, holds on and sequesters the E2F transcription factors, but the E2F transcription factor is not on its own in the world. It's It's got a dimerization partner always with it. So let's say this little box that I'm drawing in here represents the E2F transcription factor. So uh, we'll cover this in orange. Okay, so in orange is the E2F transcription factor. Okay, and now uh, next to it, uh, with it, which is also being sequestered by the retinoblastoma protein, it's in this cl um, claw, basically, here, um, is the dimerization partner of the E2F transcription factor. So this is the dimerization partner, often just abbreviated to DP. Okay, so this is the E2F transcription factor with its dimerization partner. Okay, and retinoblastoma protein, we should give that a nice colour in as well. So let's have retinoblastoma protein in blue here. Okay, retinoblastoma protein is usually holding on to these E2F transcription factors with their dimerization partner, and that's inhibiting uh, the um, E2F transcription factor with its dimerization partner, which, if it was free, would go to the nucleus and it would start altering the expression of certain proteins. And basically, what we know is that one of the proteins that it causes the expression of is cyclin A. Uh, which is going to uh, move you, basically, into the S phase of the cell cycle. Okay, so in order to move into the S phase, you need to get the release of E2F and uh, its dimerization partner. So you need to inactivate this retinoblastoma protein. Now, the main uh, thing which inactivates the retinoblastoma protein is an enzyme known as the uh, G1 uh, CDK. Okay, so it's called the G1 CDK, but often, rather than calling it that, you're probably more likely to hear people call this the cyclin D CDK4 complex. So this, oh dear, and I've drawn it right across where I was going to put the rest of the cell cycle, never mind. Cyclin D um, CDK4 complex. Okay, uh, right, the cell cycle will have to be a bit of an odd shape now. Uh, so, uh, this basically is a complex of two proteins. It consists of the cyclin-dependent kinase 4, which is this CDK4 enzyme, so I'll label this up. This is CDK4, which stands for cyclin-dependent kinase 4. Okay, so cyclin-dependent kinase 4. And um, cyclin-dependent kinase 4 on its own is not active. Instead, it needs a cyclin bound to it. And in this case, it's got cyclin D bound to it. So here is cyclin D. So let me colour in cyclin D. We'll have cyclin D in pink here. Okay, right. And uh, we'll also have... Uh, CDK4 in, we'll have that in red. So CDK4 is here bound with cyclin D. Okay, and when cyclin D binds to CDK4, it forms this active cyclin D CDK4 complex, also known as the G1 
uh, CDK, uh, which is going to phosphorylate the retinoblastoma protein. And when it phosphorylates the retinoblastoma protein, uh, then that's going to inhibit the uh, retinoblastoma protein. So it's going to phosphorylate here. Okay. And I will show now the uh, retinoblastoma protein being inhibited. So basically what's going to happen is you're going to get this trans, um, well, this transition. You're going to get retinoblastoma protein changing conformation, basically. And I'll draw this as it sort of straightening out into a long linear. But remember, this is just a cartoon. This is not an actual crystal structure I'm attempting to draw here. Okay, and then let's say this is the phosphate group that the, um, C, uh, the cyclin DCDK4 complex, or the G1 CDK, has added on to uh, retinoblastoma. Remember, that's what it's doing. It's a kinase enzyme, fundamentally. So it adds phosphate groups onto um, proteins. Okay, so the retinoblastoma protein is now inactivated, and it's basically released this E2F transcription factor with its dimerization partner. So it's released this E2F DP complex. Okay, and they are now free to go and cause the cell to move from uh, the G1 uh, into the S phase of the cell cycle, basically. Okay, so um, we need to talk a bit more about this G1 CDK, this, uh, which is this um, cyclin D CDK4 complex. Right. Okay, so um, cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases are very, very interesting uh, because their levels alter all the way through the cell cycle. And you can draw on these graphs, uh, which we will draw towards the end of this uh, video, uh, which looks very much like the menstrual cycle. I always think it looks like the menstrual cycle. It looks like the, um, the hormones in the menstrual cycle. So, basically... If um, we plot time on the x-axis and we plot the amount of this uh, cyclin DCDK4 complex, so initially we're just talking about G1 phase, let's say. Right, what we find is that throughout G1 phase, the level of this cyclin DCDK4 complex is just growing and growing and growing, basically. Okay, so it gets higher and higher in the cytoplasm as you approach the G1S transition here, basically. And that growing level of cyclin DCDK4 in the cytoplasm of the cell is believed to be what then causes the, um, the phosphorylation of the retinoblastoma protein, inactivating it, and therefore the release of the E2F uh, DP complex. Uh, and uh, that obviously drives you into the S phase of the cell cycle. Now, uh, there is another kinase, another cyclin-dependent kinase, um, which is important in um, regulating this rise in cyclin DCDK4, and is very important in um, this G1S transition. Okay, so if we plot, so if this represents the level of the G1 CDK, which means this cyclin DCDK4 complex, then let's have another graph. Uh, which I should probably do in a different colour, but we'll have it here. This other graph, this um, is going to represent the levels of another um, CDK, and this CDK is going to be the G1S CDK, okay? And uh, the G1S CDK, again, is a cyclin bound to a certain cyclin-dependent kinase, and this time specifically, it is cyclin E, bound to the CDK2 enzyme. So G1S uh, CDK means the cyclin-dependent kinase 2 enzyme bound with cyclin E. And it's very important that you understand that this is not just another name for cyclin-dependent kinase 2. It's a name for the cyclin E CDK2 complex. So these cyclin-dependent kinases, their function in the cell is completely and utterly uh, influenced by which cyclin they're bound to. So we'll draw cyclin E in yellow down here, okay, and we'll have CDK2 in blue. Okay, so here's CDK2, standing for cyclin-dependent kinase 2. Right, okay, so um, this, the level of this G1S CDK, as you can see from this graph, it's 
hikes at the G1S transition, which is why it's called the G1S CDK. Because when they originally measured the levels of this, it was spiking at the G1S transition, and therefore they decided, you know, it must be very important in causing that movement from the growth one phase uh, to the uh, synthesis phase of the cell cycle. And when they actually looked at what the function of um, this protein was, well, firstly, uh, and most importantly, they found that it was inhibiting a uh, protein known as P27. Okay, so let's just discuss P27. So P27 is a protein which is capable of inhibiting um, um, G1 CDK, so capable of inhibiting the formation of cyclin D CDK4 complexes. And the way it does this is it binds to the cyclin-dependent kinase 4 enzyme, so this enzyme here, which is one of the crucial components of the um, cyclin uh, D CDK4 complex. And basically, it blocks um, that CDK4 enzyme from being able to bind to the cyclin D protein. So, by doing that, it stops the formation of the cyclin D CDK4 complexes and uh, therefore inhibits uh, this progression from the G1 to the S phase. Okay, so P27 is there in pink. So remember, the CDK4 enzyme without cyclin D bound to it is not active. So this is not going to uh, phosphorylate the retinoblastoma protein, basically. Okay, so what cyclin E CDK2 does is it phosphorylates and inhibits P27. Okay, so it's going to phosphorylate and inhibit. That's what that um, um, that this sort of arrow with a uh, a line at the end means. It means inhibits. Um, it's going to inhibit P27. So basically, what it's going to do is if this is P27 here. It's going to stick a phosphate group onto P27 and stop it from working. Because again, it's a kinase enzyme, so it adds phosphate groups onto things. So basically, it's going to add a phosphate group onto the P27 protein. That's going to stop the P27 protein from functioning. So now cyclin-dependent uh, kinase 4, this CDK4 enzyme, will be unbound to the P27. It can then bind to the cyclin D, form these cyclin D CDK4 complexes, and then phosphorylate the retinoblastoma protein, releasing the E2FDP complexes and taking you into this S phase. Okay, so that's the role of the uh, cyclin E CDK2 enzyme or the G1S CDK. It's also it's also been found that cyclin E CDK2 complexes or these G1S CDKs are also actually capable of catalyzing this reaction as well. So they're capable of doing the same thing as the cyclin D CDK4 complexes, i.e. they're capable of phosphorylating the retinoblastoma protein and inactivating it and then causing the release of the E2FDP complexes. So in both of those ways, this spike in cyclin E CDK2 is going to drive you from the G1 phase to the S phase of the um, cell cycle. Okay, and we'll call it there for this video, and then we'll discuss uh, the S phase.